Okay, someone's asking, I forgot who it is, but this will be by Michael Fawcett, who works for Prince Charles. If you like the video, I hope you do like it. If you haven't subscribed, go ahead and subscribe, and thank you very much for watching. Hi, I'm Mark, and this is my journey through tarot. Come on. So this is Michael Fawcett. Some people say he's been dripping, draining money out of um, his uh, advantage that he has with the monarchy uh, for a long time. So let's see if Prince Charles knew what was going on and what else we could find out. Okay, so I'm just going to tell you what I was able to wiki about uh, Michael Fawcett and start right into it. So Michael Fawcett is uh, now, I suppose, or was, maybe he's resigned, we'll find out as I read this, right? So Michael Fawcett, uh, Chief Executive of the Prince's Foundation, which is the umbrella group for the Prince's charitable organizations, uh, has temporarily stepped down. See, I should have waited. He's temporarily stepped down due to claims that uh, he, Michael, helped secure an honorary title for a Saudi businessman who is a major donor of around $1.5 million. 1.5 million pounds, uh, and that's by the Sunday Times, uh, is who says that. Now, supposedly, uh, Michael Fawcett helped nominate the Saudi for a CBE, and a lot of us don't know what that is, so I'll tell you what I found out. That's Commander of the Order of the British Empire, the highest ranking order of the British Empire award, excluding knight or damehood, okay? Now, Charles is not under scrutiny, uh, but the Metropolitan Police, due to a complaint made by the anti-monarchy group uh, Republic, is the name of the group, are looking into this. So the Mo Metropolitan Police are looking into this because Republic complained. And uh, the Prince is the key fundraiser for his causes, raising more than 100 million pounds yearly for charity. Okay, so in incredible cause if some of it's not getting, you know, siphoned off. Uh, this work is kept deliber deliberately separate from his constitutional role of representing the Queen, which is that part of his or his duties is paid for by the British government. Now, since government, now since the UK has a constitutional monarchy, as we all know, uh, royal should remain neutral, as we all know, and avoid expressing personal views on policy. Although Charles has come under fire from time to time, uh, following uh, interventions on subjects close to his heart. Now, in 2015, and this is the last little bit, in 2015, 27 letters written by the Prince uh, were released under the Freedom of Information Act that showed him lobbying the Prince, lobbying government departments on a number of subjects like uh, farmer subsidies, promoting British produce. Uh, he addressed being an outspoken heir in 2018, uh, saying he has he had tried to make sure whatever he's done is non-party political, but acknowledged he will act differently as a sovereign. And I, I believe that. Uh, Michael Fawcett is his longest serving and most loyal aide, apparently, who worked apparently, who worked his way up from being a valet to CEO of this foundation. And Charles once described Fawcett as indispensable. And you might remember he said about Camilla that she was non-negotiable. So I think when he gets to that sort of a word, he's pretty serious. Now, the prince has not been accused of any kind of wrongdoing in this regard. Michael previously left his role uh, as valet in 2003 after being cleared of selling unwanted royal gifts and taking a cut. I don't know. For me, where there's smoke, there's fire. And I've got to tell you, there's a rule of thumb that I use in my life is that people don't change. You may think people change and they may be different for a really long period of time, but people, in my opinion, go back to who they actually are. And um, so we'll see what the cards say about Michael Fawcett and Prince Charles. Okay, so I got these great cards. And if you ever doubted that I'm a sucker for a great packaging of cards, then this will confirm it. So these cards are by famed artist Salvador Dali. He includes himself in uh, the cards and his wife, and they also include uh, examples of some of his artwork and other uh, artists uh, that, that he felt were appropriate for the for the interpretation. Uh, these cards were created uh, or were um, commissioned in 1973 for the uh, film uh, Live and Let Die. Uh, 
However, uh, Dolly's um, uh, price was, was, I guess, too much. So contract uh, negotiations broke down. And then finally, 10 years later, by 1984, Dolly completed the tarot deck, 78 cards, and had them published for the first time, limited edition. And now Toshin has re- um, uh, printed these cards in this amazing uh, box. So when I ordered them, I thought I'd get a box, you know, about this big. And when this thing came in the mail, I was totally shocked. They're not cheap. They're quite expensive. But anyway, so this is an amazing cover. This box is like a, a crushed velvet uh, kind of finish here. And it's just everything, everything, everything that gets me going about tarot card uh, containers, if you can't tell from my excitement. So, and then there's lots on the back here. It's in three different languages. It's in uh, Spanish, in German, and in English. And then the way this thing opens up, it's just like this. And once you get inside, you've got this amazing booklet uh, to describe uh, how uh, something about the cards and how to use them. The booklet is a full color, and then each page has three interpretations of the cards. When I say interpretations, I mean that's English, uh, German, and Spanish. So, um, lovely, lovely book. Amazing. I mean, the price of the cards was, was the, the price that I paid for this was worth it if I only got this book. The one uh, problem I have with it, however, is that it's beautiful, but the first part of this uh, book is uh, a lot that talks about uh, Dolly and how the cards came to be. And as you can see, it's on this dark purple with this gold printing, and I can barely barely make it out. I'm going to have to use my magnifying glass eventually to read it, but uh, not today. And uh, so I've had these for a few days and I've been uh, practicing with them. I haven't tried to decipher this yet. It's just too dark and I've got uh, vision problems that make it just even more complicated. But when you finally get to where they're talking about the cards themselves, it's fantastic because you've got a white background, easy to read. It's a little small, but still it's easy to read because they've got everything on one page. And uh, amazing, amazing, amazing um, I'm so glad I got this. It was on a whim. Now the cards, look at how they're displayed. The cards themselves come in this really cool gold foil kind of, it's a typical box for tarot cards, but just the design is terrific. And then the cards themselves, I'll take them out here, put the box back, and well, I'll keep this out. And then I'll put this away. But I'll show you the cards quickly um, before we go any further. And I guess I'll have to leave this here so we have something to, to, to look at. And then uh, here, when you get into the inner sanctum, there's no more uh, instructions inside here. It's just this cool uh, foiled uh, box. And then the cards themselves are terrific. The back is a really beautiful uh, foil looking design. It's not foil, but it's a gold design. And this just simply says Dolly over and over and over and over and over and over and over again. That's the back of the cards. The cards themselves are amazing. So, like I say, they have included some of uh, uh, snippets of Dolly's work and some other artists. And if I was more studious, I would have really studied that and have something to tell you uh, more concrete. But um, they're just absolutely beautiful. On the Magician, you can see uh, Salvador Dali is the face of the Magician. If I find it quickly, I'll show it to you. And on the uh, Empress, that's his wife, uh, Gala, but, uh, which I don't see right away. But um, they're terrific cards. I can't wait to use them. And so there's where we're at. You know, I, I make these, uh, this mess of the cards like this uh, so that uh, you can get a chance to see different cards more completely than just the few uh, cards that a, a, a reader might pull up in, the, in a reading and, um, and enjoy that. And then like I always say, if you're working with someone, I always think it's a good idea to have them spread the cards out like this to kind of get their energy into the cards. And then you know um, that they've got a, a stake in the, in the reading. So Salvador Dali amazing, worth every penny I paid for these. Okay, so here we go. This will be Michael Fawcett primarily, but we want to know also if uh, Prince Charles has been aware of this stuff. I mean, this guy has been by uh, Charles' side for a very long time. Worked his way up from being a valet to being president of the Prince's Charitable uh, Organization. And, and that's the umbrella group of the Prince's Charitable Organization. So, I mean, a very high uh, position, a lot of responsibility, and uh, Prince Charles obviously thinks a lot, a lot of Michael Fawcett. So, let's see. Um, let's do three cards first, just to see, does Prince Charles, uh, is he aware, has he been aware of this actual wrongdoing? Not just aware of the accusations, but has Prince Charles 
actually been aware, certain, of this wrongdoing. Okay? Just three cards for that right at the beginning, just to get us warmed up. So one, two, and three. Prince Charles, have you been knowledgeably aware of actual wrongdoing by uh, Michael? First card. Okay, this is the Queen of Wands. Okay, so the Queen of Wands, uh, Wands are action, uh, plans, emotion, fire, moving forward. The Queen of Wands is very, very um, uh, a strong card. Um, the, this would typically be a yes card, um, but let's just understand what this card is showing us. So this is a queen, and she is fully in charge of those plans. Interesting. <clears throat> the second card as to whether Charles knew, and Charles knows, is this... Uh, uh, <laughs> Los Enamorados, the lovers. So this is a major arcana card. This would be a yes card, typically, if you're asking a question of a yes or no um, a nature. And uh, the lovers are partnerships. So that's very interesting. So this queen is in charge of her, her, her plans. This is partnerships. The third card in that question as to whether Charles knew is, um, look at this. This is a great big Ace of Wands, another Yes card. These are three Yes cards. Wands are uh, plans, uh, yeah. You know, I don't know that Charles participated, but I would say that in this Lover's card, he was an accomplice to covering it up. That's how it seems to me. Who am I? I'm just some uh, hick in the United States uh, speculating about uh, the royal family. But that's what these cards say to me. Okay, so I've established that for this reading, I'm going to say, yeah, Charles was aware. Maybe he told you, let's say, listen, buddy, I found out about this, and you can't be doing this, so don't do it anymore. What did I tell you in the, in the opening of this? People don't change their ways. Look at Charles himself. He loved Camilla from the very beginning. He tried to do something else, and it just didn't work. He had to go back to the woman that he always has had deep affection for. So, I mean, these are just markers of character to me. Okay, and uh, the guy was a valet, and all of a sudden he finds him in this uh, company of, uh, you know, having all of this um, available to him. Yeah. So Michael Fawcett, Michael Fawcett, Michael Fawcett, okay, are you guilty of these accusations? Michael Fawcett, are you guilty of these accusations? Full Celtic Cross, six cards. One, two, three, four, five. Oh, I'll drop it in six. Okay. So let's, I'm really feeling um, jittery about this, to tell you the truth. Okay, so six cards. Michael Fawcett. Signifier card for this is the sun. The sun is shining a light on something, uh, being basked in the glow of the, of the, of the sun. We have strength here in this lion. We have these cherubs up here dancing on a cloud. We have this fella who is, what is he? He's, he's draped in this kind of red, uh, I don't know what, holding this uh, fork. So the sun. Um, this is typically a yes card, but this will be the signifier for whether Michael Fawcett uh, is guilty. Uh, the challenge to that then is this uh, Imperatrix. So th the uh, Empress is very uh, fruitful. She's typically like Mother Nature. Um, it's also usually a yes card. And uh, this card just tells us, for me, what this says in this reading is there's so much bounty. There was so much temptation. There was so much available there. This Empress, so the challenge to the sun, the challenge to everything being out in the open is all the bounty that uh, is right there in front of you. That's how I see it. The base of this reading then, is the El Diablo. Look at that, the devil. <laughs> I tell you, this really scares me when the cards speak so uh, definitely to the question I've asked. Um, but anyway, so the devil, and this is lesser intentions. The base of this whole thing is is based, you know, rooted in the devil of, of lesser intentions. My goodness. Oh my. Okay, the past in this reading then, Michael, did you know, and this is the Ace of Cups. This is a great big emotional offering of passion. This is, um, and look at this uh, scenario that we, that we have here. We have some people who look to be, you know, shipwrecked almost. They've got a little skiff that looks like it's on a beach, because that seems to me to be the water out there in an island, and these folks are, you know, look to be 
shipwreck out on a beach. But the Ace of Cups is a gripping offering of passion, of emotion, of uh, wow. I don't know. So for me, I want to think, but I mean, this may be just me, uh, my my uh, flawed human self saying, yeah, this was too much for him to turn down this uh, offering. I don't know. In the sky of this reading is, okay, how many swords do we have here? We've got one, two, okay, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine of swords. Ah, the nine of swords is nightmares. And if I'd looked at this picture, I would have known. This fellow has laid down himself on this on the sort of a bed. He's got these nine swords hanging above him. The Nine of Swords is always nightmares. So the best that this could come to up in the sky here is the nightmare that it has become. Wow. Okay. So let's put these out here so that all these make kind of some sense. Um, then in the uh, final outcome for the first part of this uh, Celtic Cross is, ah, death. <laughs> Oh my goodness, Michael, you shouldn't have done it. Okay, so death is not usually death, but it's definitely the end of a cycle. And this is certainly ominous in, in, in the context of this reading. So we'll just leave it at that. Uh, the last four cards for Michael. Michael, Michael, did you do it? The, the self of that question, did you do it, Michael? The lovers, look at that. The partners comes back up from our reading about Prince Charles. Yeah, there was, you know, Prince Charles doesn't need the money. He doesn't need these sort of deals on the side like uh, Prince Andrew does or some of the other royals or the people that work for him. But for Michael, there was some sort of a partnership uh, involved with this. My goodness. Right under this Empress of Bounty. Look at that. Oh, my gosh. And then the... Um, the um, environment that that's in is uh, the King of Wands. So the King of uh, Planning, someone who's really in charge of making these plans. You know, Michael had to feel like on top of the world being able to pull this off, if in fact that's what he did. And my goodness, it certainly looks like that's probably what he did. The hopes and the fears of all of this for Michael, did you do it, is, um, ah, the hanged man. <laughs> Oh, they're going to hang him. This typically means, you know, looking at something from another direction. But I just can't help go to that more ominous interpretation of that, you know, he's going to, they're going to hang him on this. Not literally hang him, but they're going to pin it on him. Uh, but the hangman is typically looking at things from an other perspective. And if, let's face it, if you were trying to get a little bonus out of your job, you're not looking at it from the, the honest, straightforward perspective. You're looking at it's like running a stop sign. You know, you're going to look one way and the other way and say, you know, I think I can do it. Yeah, I think I'll do it. And, and look, that's where you are, the hangman. And then the final outcome for the whole thing on Michael, that you do it, is look at that. The Two of Swords making a choice, okay? deciding which way to go. And it's too late for him. I'm sorry, I'm just going to call it on this one. He had a choice. He picked one way, and his life moved forward in that direction. He could have picked it the other way, and his life would have moved forward in the other direction. Truth, justice, rules, law also are signified health, but, you know, this is more on the rules and law here. He, 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 he uh, Michael, you shouldn't have done it. So I'll go over it one more time. Just for clarification. So the signifier card as to whether uh, Michael did it was the sun. Everything out in the sunshine, but this fella is holding a pitchfork. I mean, and, you know, and the strength of that. Uh, he's challenged by the, the bounty that this empress is representing right here. It's all right there in front of him for the taking. Uh, the base of the reading was the devil. Okay, ill intention. The past of this reading was this great big cup, this offering of, of passion, of emotion. This could have been even the prince having kind of let him off the hook the first time, saying, listen, I know, let's just put it under the carpet. Uh, the uh, hopes in the, the sky in this reading is the, the Nine of Swords, which is just a nightmare, okay? The likely outcome of the whole thing was the death card, which is end, end, end of a cycle. The self of that question were the lovers, partnerships, of course. Um, the uh, environment that that's in is this King of Wands, feeling like I've got this plan, I can make this happen, I'm the king of my plan. The hopes and the fears for this was this hanged man looking at something from another perspective. You know, it doesn't always, this doesn't always mean that you're looking at it from the right perspective, just from another uh, way. And you, you are kind of being high out here. And then the, um, the uh, final outcome of this was the Two of Swords making a choice. You still can make a choice, Michael. You still can come clean and do the right thing. Who thinks he's going to do that? So that's what I've got for this question. I don't know. It seems like the card spoke pretty definitively on that. Let me know what you think if, you, if you're if you up to it. And um, there we go. Oh my goodness, Michael, you shouldn't have done it. I'm Mark, my journey through tarot. Tomorrow's another day. Stop by. We'll do it again. Ciao for now.